Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited because today I am interviewing my super awesome friend, Tamsin Vessels. It is so good to be in your beautiful home. I'm so excited to talk about skincare. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. It's long overdue and exciting to chat about skincare, especially with the change of season. Absolutely. So tell me about how you got into skincare. Well, that's it's quite a story. It started, I would say, at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. I developed severe, severe cystic acne. Mm -hmm. um, not a pimple here and a pimple there. Severe um, mm. blackheads, oiliness, breakout, the works. Mm -hmm. And it continued for about... I would say at least 10 years mm. and we sure. know being a teenager you have crazy hormones as mm. it is I was living in Cape Town South Africa then um, and it was hot as well so it wasn't just the acne it was hyperpigmentation on top of it wow. it really knocks your confidence especially yeah. at that age mm. um, it affects a lot of decisions you make or don't make I made it my life's mission to really pursue skincare understanding the skin understanding how products and treatments and all other factors really affect the skin, mm. male, female, anybody yeah. going through that experience um, yeah. and to improve their skin as a whole. I had acne as a kid. Oh, but, really? But, yeah, and I remember, yeah. I, it was bad. I actually remember even in my, but in my adult life, mm. I used Accutane and it's a very, very heavy drug, right, that you take. I used it, I think, three times, but the side effects were so bad. Mine wasn't as severe as yours, but oh my word. You just don't ever want to go out, right? It's just the most awful. You can actually feel depressed with having a bad skin. So well, that's the thing. And a lot of people don't give it enough credit where it really affects your confidence. Yeah. I am naturally a very shy person. And only around you I'm not. <laughs> and um, when your confidence is knocked, it stops you from girls' nights. It stopped me sure. from doing certain activities, whether it was swimming, because I wouldn't wash my makeup off my face. Yeah. Looking as an outsider going... Mm. They don't see what you're experiencing. Yeah. So it becomes yeah. pretty tough. It happened for the greater good because I have now been in skincare for over 16 years. Sure. What are the skin challenges you faced in Canada versus living in South Africa? South Africa, everybody knows, is very hot. The mm -hmm. biggest concern there and the biggest challenge mm -hmm. is the sun. Yeah. So hyperpigmentation, sun damage, I still am very normal combination oily skin time mm -hmm. there in summer it would be your makeup would be sweated off by <laughs> by lunchtime i know then we moved here in 2017 it was cold for us it was cold yeah and it is a very dry cold where you have a lot of your internal heating is on or air conditioning and as a again as an oily skin type i was finding my skin was just purging all the time my hair was so oily, sure. I no dry shampoo was going to do the trick. It was really a challenge for me to try and mm. understand why my, my skin and my hair was reacting the way that it did and how to improve on it and make sure that I wasn't creating a bigger problem in terms of acne again. There are a few tips and tricks that I, I have mm. up my sleeve on my website with regards to moving to Canada from South Africa, okay. having a humidifier, changing your shampoo, changing your pillow slip. Yes, love that tip. We don't realize changing that pillow slip every day or every other day mm. is one of my top tips for anybody suffering with breakouts or an oily skin. Mm. We are spreading that acne bacteria and we just sort of recycling it and putting it back on the skin again so washing your face properly not under very very hot water don't stand in the shower with the water really sort of billowing on your face mm. do it at the basin or cup your hands and wash your face that way not over stripping your skin that's mm. another mistake a lot of people make mm. is especially if they're oily acne prone they wash their skin morning noon and night you're over stimulating over stripping the skin and producing more oil so keep things clean, keep fingers off the face, yes. introduce something like a humidifier in your bedroom. I, that definitely made a huge difference for me. And then using a clarifying cleanser once or twice a week just to help control that oil production on the hair. Mm. And then investing in a really good probiotic yeah. for the gut as, as well as omega-3. We really want to nourish the skin and I yeah. believe everything does. We know it stems from the gut. Yeah. And take care of your insides if you want to take care of your skin. Tams, what advice would you give somebody that's starting a new skincare routine? Like, they are kids and teenagers that have no idea. There's so much out there. It's like, where do you even begin? What do you suggest? 
it can be very overwhelming that's actually the number one comment i get specifically since being in canada in north america the options are endless whether it's a shoppers drug mart a walmart or a sephora or you're in a skincare clinic itself mm -hmm. my first first and only tip i always suggest is have a skincare consultation mm -hmm. i cannot stress this enough you've read about a trend or you're following a celebrity that's got a new product range out you've heard about certain ingredients you don't apply them properly you end up with irritation and dryness so booking a skincare consultation allows that esthetician to really dig deep as to what are you currently doing mm. what are the products you're using what ingredients are you using what aren't you doing we often, we have a set routine for our skincare and we don't realize that they're little things like changing the pillow slip, using a clean face cloth. Yeah. Um, sometimes focusing on using fewer products actually than using a hundred products and just overwhelming your skin. No two skins are the same. I always say that your skincare consultation shouldn't be the same either because of anything other than our makeup, our DNA is different. Take the time, find someone that you trust someone that's easy to talk to and mm. someone that's going to follow up i had this experience myself you end up spending a fortune not only on product but you also have a treatment and then they kind of hope for the best and you are then sitting with a hefty bill and not quite sure how to progress with that follow-up is very very important to ensure that you're seeing progress with your product mm. and to see that the skin is not experiencing any unnecessary downtime or irritation there is always room for irritation, but it's how you manage that mm. afterwards. That's why prepping your skin prior to having a treatment is one of the most important things you can do to get the best result out of your treatment. The home care that you do after your treatment is just as important. That helps minimize risk, hyperpigmentation, and any downtime that's unnecessary. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've had your consultation, what are the absolute must-haves? I love asking this question to people who are on top of their game because this is what we want to know. Tell us. I like to reduce the amount of products that you're using. And a lot of people come to me in the consultation and say to me, I'm on a budget. Mm. I really want to target certain things or prevent premature aging. Yeah. What do I need? Yeah. Three things. Okay. Very, very potent vitamin C serum. I cannot stress this enough. A potent vitamin C serum does mm. two things for us. It is antioxidant protection, which means it helps your skin and prevents your skin from free radical damage. Mm -hmm. So things like pollution, smoking, we live in a city, that kind of pollution, we really want yeah. it almost to double up with my then next product, which is sunscreen. So I have got, I cannot explain to you how many clients in Canada have said to me, Tammy, I don't wear sunscreen. I'm in Canada. I'm just going to have a moment used to be me get into big trouble from her i don't want sunscreen <laughs> go on vitamin c is your first layer okay got antioxidant it. protection mm. and collagen stimulation mm. right so as we age and everything starts to go a little south we want to do as much as possible to prevent that okay the second layer is our broad spectrum sunscreen mm. i prefer to look for a physical or a mineral sunscreen which means it's got zinc oxide or titanium dioxide in it as its physical filters but only preventative for things like skin cancer age spots we often only see later in life this is because mm. the damage the amount of sun damage that's done before the age of 21 Yikes. only starts to reveal itself later in life and then retinol vitamin a Love it. It's proven to be anti-aging. It not only helps for fine lines and wrinkles and improving the texture of your skin, but it helps for someone like myself who is yeah. oily, prone to acne. Yeah. It helps exfoliate that skin gently as well. However, I say this, and I think this is one of the most important things when it comes to retinol. You either love it or you hate it. And if you hate it, it's because you haven't been introduced mm. properly. Mm. Slow. Introduce it one night a week. For the first two weeks then up that to twice a week the next two weeks okay introducing retinol slowly is not only going to prevent um, unnecessary dryness and irritation that we don't really need it is one of the most effective ingredients vitamin a in terms of improving the health of the skin overall mm. so those would be my top three um, there are a few finer details to why you would choose what you would look for in choosing 
a vitamin C, a potent vitamin C that's not going to oxidize. That's the other thing. Mm. Sunscreen, you can get a versatile tint. You can get an untinted option. Then it doubles up as a foundation and a sunscreen. And your retinol is your anti-aging potent serum that you can use for the rest of your life. Those three are yeah. the golden foundations for a skincare routine. That's my opinion and something I live by. Can I just say that I have all three <laughs> and I'm wearing the sunscreen today. I love the sunscreen. It's a tinted sunscreen that I'm wearing and you'll know all the details on it, but it's like a factor 40, right? It is. Can we just quickly talk about that? Like... Should I be wearing 40, 50, 60, 90? Okay. What is the deal with this? So my rule of thumb is please rather use a, a standalone sunscreen yeah. than an SPF that is built into a moisturizer. Ah, please. There are active ingredients normally in a moisturizer that need to be preserved on their own. Mm -hmm. When you add the addition of sunscreen filters, a lot of them are chemical filters, um, they disrupt the formula as a whole. So again, my rule is normally spend on a serum, make sure that you've got a sunscreen that is a minimum of an SPF 30. Hmm. Focus on it being a mineral, if you can, mineral or physical blocker. It takes a good, I would say 20 to 30 minutes if you can apply that in the morning before going out in the sun and of course reapplication. Yes. You need to reapply. If you are skiing down the slopes in Blue Mountain or you are in Cape Town on the beach, Reapplication of sunscreen is vital. Yeah, we won't even get into wearing a hat and protecting the back of your hands and your oh, chest, but that's for another day. Okay. <laughs> now on to the treatments. So, like, what are the treatments? How many should you have? How often? What is best? You know, back in like the seventies or eighties, I think people used to say like, "Oh, are you going for a peel?" And then you knew like half their face was coming off. They'd have to like recuperate in a nursing home or something. I and people have this thing, right, about like, "Oh my gosh, it's it's going to be painful." Unfortunately, yes. Back in the day, that was a misconception. Samantha from Sex in the City didn't help with her peeling your <laughs> <or> face. <laughs> However, things have evolved quite a bit since then. Treatments are very specific according to what we're wanting to treat. If you are wanting to have a treatment done, do not go for cheaper is better. Cheaper with regards to a treatment can often lead to a lot of problems. And that's why if I say to, if I have a client that comes to me and say, Tammy, I'm on a budget. Can you set me up with a home care routine and a treatment protocol? I will focus a lot more on the home care, preparing your skin, mm. using that, that vitamin C, using that retinol, and of course the sunscreen prior to the treatment. Okay. And then something like peels, chemical peels. There are various fruit acids that we use, salicylic acid, which is a beta hydroxy acid, wonderful for an oily acne prone skin. Then we have lactic acid, which is absolutely, I almost want to say it's the hug in the bottle, um, when it comes to fruit acids because it's the gentler of the fruit acids when it comes to treating a sensitive uh, redness or rosacea prone skin. It hydrates while it gently exfoliates the skin. And then we've got things like glycolic acid and TCA. Um, I mean the list goes on. Wow. There are so many different fruit acids. There are different lasers. There are different um, modalities in terms of microneedling, high frequency, LED lights. Yes. Um, Heard yeah. about all these things and it's like what to do next. So there's okay. a lot. Mm. And when I when I set you up for a home care routine, there are two things, two factors to take into consideration. What is your skincare routine? How we're prepping for that treatment? Mm. And I need I inform you as to how many treatments you're going to need. This is something that if it's not discussed with you prior to having a treatment, you're going to set yourself up for failure mm -hmm. because it's either going to be too costly because you weren't prepared for the output of cost involved. Mm -hmm. Something like peels. I normally recommend that you prep your skin first. Have anything between three to six peels. One a month if you are treating something like a, 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 an active condition, acne or hyperpigmentation, you okay. might be going bi-weekly. Mm -hmm. Three to six treatments is normally the baseline when it comes to a peel. Depending on the type of peel you're having done, I normally recommend that your treatments, your peel season, your IPL is done in winter. So fall is a great time to prep yes. your skin so that you're ready for the winter season to have your treatment done. 
something like IPL, which is wonderful for collagen synthesis, for those red veins around the nose, on the cheeks. Love that. And the sunspots, it's a three in one. That again can be anything from three, six, or 12 treatments. You might have three full face treatments. You might have another three just individual targeting veins, targeting sunspots. Okay. I also like to alternate between treatments. So prep with a peel, then have an IPL, finish up with another peel. So you're with a peel, you're preparing the skin, you're bringing all those dead skin layers to the top. Mm -hmm. It then f it flakes off the skin. Mm -hmm. You can then get to those underlying sunspots and the veins, target that with IPL. It again stimulates that collagen synthesis, plumps up the skin, finish off with a peel. Other options are microneedling. Microneedling is phenomenal for anti-aging, pore size, fine lines and wrinkles. However, please, please do not have microneedling done if you've got active acne. If you scrub, if you rub, or if you needle over active pustular acne, you will spread it like wildfire. Wow. Anything from about three to six treatments or six to 12 treatments mm -hmm. is what you should prepare for, budget for, and expect when it comes to a treatment program. Not every treatment is for everyone. Um, again, that's where your consultation is so important. Yeah. Having the right consultation, understanding what you're having done, understanding if there's any downtime, mm. pregnancy, planning to fall pregnant and breastfeeding. There are a lot of ingredients, there are a lot of treatments that you should not be having done. Mm. Um, and please ask those questions during your consultation so that you're setting yourself up for success from the get-go. I am so excited. Now it's time to book your consultation. Tams, what do you need to do in terms of booking a consultation with you? What comes next? So anybody living in Canada, I offer a free virtual skincare consultation for. During COVID, we had to pivot, most of us did. So I am completely virtual at the moment, skinbytamsin.ca, or you can find me on Instagram okay. at skinbytamsin. There's no judgment. People get very nervous. They do. The more information you give me, the better I'm able to assist you. I do work with a absolutely incredible medical grade skincare brand. Um, that is my one offer and the other offer which I do a lot of the teens that really struggle um, and want something that they can afford on their own. Um, I really tailor make your home care routine for you. I focus on can you maintain the skincare routine? Can you afford it? Because if you can't maintain it, if you can't afford it, you're not going to be consistent and we're not going to see results. Yeah. So all the tips and tricks I will give you in the consultation. I make notes for you after our call. I email that to you as well. And then two weeks later, I touch base with you. Fantastic. What a great morning with you. I actually learned so much and I use a lot of the products. I've had a consultation with Tams because I'm a friend. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Um, but get hold of her. She's amazing. Um, not only that, but super clued up in terms of everything skin. It was awesome spending time with you. Thank you, Tams. Thank you for having me. Awesome.